Hello, everybody, and welcome back to CCA's Medical Minute, uh, sponsored by Kroger Health. Uh, I am very excited today to have uh, Curtis Fuller with us from WLWT. As I just told him moments ago, I've been watching him for 30 plus years. Um, I'm a lifetime like news geek, actually, which is which is can be good and bad, I guess. My wife is not a fan. She, she, she would rather not watch so much news, but I do. Uh, and then over here to my left is Dr. Bill Barrett, um, not only our founder, but uh, also the uh, co-director of the UC Cancer Center and a whole other long list of uh, bullet points that we don't even need to go into today. But uh <laughs> Anyway, we wanted to have uh, Curtis on today because um, Curtis has recently gone public with uh, his own cancer journey and uh, something that I can well relate to as well. Um, and Dr. Barrett's even, I don't know if you knew this, Dr. Barrett's my doc as well. I didn't know so, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so anyway, but um, we wanted to talk, to, I wanted to talk to you today, uh, Curtis, about a couple of things. But um, I wanted to start out just, um, you, you have something called a chordoma, and um, there's, a, there's an old phrase um, like, oh, you're one in a million. You are truly one in a million. One in a million, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I read about that today, that it about, affects about one in a million people, I mean, which is a stunning statistic. I don't know of hardly any other cancer where it's that low. Um, uh, only 300 Americans a year are diagnosed with chordoma. Uh, with right. chordoma. And so um, I guess what I would start out with is I remember my own diagnosis, and you know, I have advanced prostate cancer, uh, but prostate cancer is ubiquitous. There's all kinds of people with prostate cancer, sadly. Um, most outcomes are good. But I remember doing that initial research. And, um, and one thing that I was at least heartened by was there were a lot of people with it, and there was a lot of research that had been done on it and, and was continuing to be done on it. So I guess my first question is, how did you react when you saw that about one in one million people have this? I mean, just rare cancer. Cancer is scary enough, but rare cancer is even scarier. Well, it, it was. It was very um, scary because you don't know where to go. Mm -hmm. um, being a journalist, I started doing the research immediately. Uh, and it was challenging at first because um, my doctors were a little unclear also where I was okay. at this point because initially we found the mass, but it wasn't determined until literally right before I went into surgery, oh, wow. where they did the biopsy to determine what was going on. Um, and then after the tumor was removed, then we had a clearer picture yeah. of this being chordoma. Okay. I hear this and I'm, I'm like, what is chordoma? Right, right. <laughs> Sounds like a sports car. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, so, I started doing the research uh, and, and realized that this was very rare. Uh, eventually found the Cordoma Foundation. Oh, wow. And um, had conversations with them. Dr. Barrett was great, sat, sat me down and sort of walked me through this and then walked me through the process of radiation. And, gotcha. Um, but okay. it was, it was a little scary. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, so, Dr. Barrett, can you, I mean, explain just what a what a chordoma is, where it resides, um, and kind of what, why radiation is a is a uh, like a great form of treatment? Is it the only form of treatment because of where it's at? Yeah, as you said, these are rare tumors, and um, you know, normally every cell in our body has a particular function. Your skin cells, people like skin cells. Your muscle cells, like muscle cells. Your bone cells, like bone cells. And occasionally mutations happen in cells. Um, and for some cancers, there are obvious associations: cigarette smoking, lung cancer, uh, certain viruses. Uh, but this is a tumor that really is thought to be just random chance. And as you said, uncommon, uh, but it comes from cells uh, that line what are called the notochord, which occurs in embryos that disappears by the time people are born. Hmm. Uh, but those cells, there can be remnants of those cells that, that can form, uh, form a tumor really anywhere along the spine. So it can be up close to the top near the base of skull, um, or it could be towards the bottom, towards the sacrum. Uh, but th they're uncommon tumors. And, um, and Curtis, I just want you to know just what inspiration you've been to so many people yeah. and Curtis you've had such a great impact on this community for so long your professionalism so many people go to you for all kinds of things and you volunteer your time in the community you've made the city a better place and so you know everybody 
deals with adversity in their lives. And I think we're always looking for role models. Uh, we're looking for heroes. And a lot of times you think of heroes as, as people in the military, uh, athletes, but people get tested uh, throughout their lives. And, and this was a major test. Mm-hmm. And, and I think, Curtis, that people were so inspired by the way you handled this with, with the grace and dignity and courage. I think what that does is that we're all gonna face adversity. And to have seen somebody of your stature face this the way you have, and go through it the way you have, gives a lot of people confidence that when their day comes to face something like this, they're gonna try and, and face the way, you, the way you did. Yeah. Well, that's very kind of you to say. I, what I would say to people is having the resources, and I said this to a lot of folks, that Cincinnati, I was blessed to be here mm-hmm. because uh, of UC. I mean, having that resource there was, was a game changer. Yeah. Having you know, cancer cares. Because the one thing I I, I said to Dr. Barrett, I, I, I need a second yeah, opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, when someone tells you you're going to get 39 treatments yeah. of radiation, although the tumor had been removed, you know, the average person says, well, what are you, why do I need that much yeah. radiation? Mm-hmm. And so... To, to be encouraged to get a second opinion was mind-boggling to yeah. me because I, I actually thought there was going to be resistance. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and someone was going to say, well, we know what we're talking about. You should listen to us. On the contrary, it was, you're right. Yeah. We want you to go out and because ultimately this is your decision. Yeah. And that... Yeah. that that was empowering and yeah. helped help walk me through this. Now, you do get a super cool mask out of the deal. That that's, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy looking contraption. To ever, like, that, was that's a... true. And, and I think by when we did the story, that helped too. Yeah. I mean, most people are not able or would ever see the inside of this proton yeah. beam treatment. So yeah. to have me in there with this mask yeah. on and it locks down. <laughs> yeah you know uh see I, I i have prostate cancer so i, I don't want uh, i don't want a mask going there. i don't want one of those things going there i'll tell you uh, but so dr Barrett, in all seriousness um and, and so you know curtis makes a good point about about uc but i mean uc is an academic research yeah. facility and does that is, does that make a big difference here I mean, it, with rare cancers? I mean, it, yeah. it, maybe not every city has that luxury. It's, it's a great point. And uh, we have great medical care in our community. You know, we have multiple health systems, a lot of really great nurses, physicians, receptionists, all, all, all kinds of people really have their heart in the right place and trying to help people with a lot of different kinds of diseases. Our goal with cancer is to do anything we can to minimize the suffering and mortality associated with this disease. And the university, as the only academic medical Medical Center region does have certain um, uh, aspects that are unique to an academic center. Subspecialization, where people focus on just one disease type. Um, we have multidisciplinary working groups where people from different specialties, the surgeons, the medical oncologists, the radiation oncologists, the diagnostic radiologists, pathologists, all work very closely together as teams. And we have a uh, really robust research infrastructure where we can carefully analyze what works, what doesn't work, new ideas. And we train the people that work throughout the city um, and so we were surrounded by these bright, young, curious people that are always asking why. It keeps everybody on their toes. It leads to new ideas. And uh, you know, Curtis mentioned the importance of second opinions. And and Curtis, you know, with your network, uh, you could have gone anywhere. And um, and and we think that a lot of things are done really well here in Cincinnati. And curious your thoughts about the benefit of c- coming specifically to Cincinnati Cancer Advisors, which is a, a unique resource. Uh, this, uh, this resource exists no place else in the country where somebody can come and get really a platinum level second opinion from somebody who's not going to assume your care, consult only, so the ultimate honest broker approach at, at no charge. And so our goal is uh, to for people to become very well educated and then often be reassured that there's great care right here. And so, Curtis, do you mind just talking a little about your experience sure. and, and how, how that um, opinion was helpful to you? It was very helpful um, because, I, as I said, I was nervous. I was, I was scared. I'm, I'm hearing 39 treatments because it's funny. <laughs> I'm thinking once they told me they got the entire tumor, I said, wow, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can go back to work in a couple weeks, and, and it's great. 
And, and so when I heard 39 treatments, it seemed to contradict the fact that the tumor right. was out. And I just didn't understand it. And so being able to just slowly walk through, I mean, mm -hmm. with a, a pile of information yeah. that I had to sift through, uh, that was extremely helpful. And, and knowing that this was being done to my benefit, mm -hmm. it wasn't like I was challenging what I was hearing right. or um, fighting against, you know, pushing back against the system, if you will. Um, it was all part of the system to make, uh, make me better, empower me. Yeah. to make the right choices. Yeah, that's great to hear, actually. You know, one thing I wonder, um, it, and I think there, you might even have um, a unique advantage just based on, on what you do. I think about my own, uh, my own process that I went through, and what was really helpful to me uh, was a friend shared an essay with me, mm -hmm. and um, it was called The Meeting Is Not The Message, and it talked about how um, cancer um, statistics are expressed. I mean, as far as uh, life expectancy with certain types of cancer and things, describing what it, you know, the difference between median and mean, all that stuff we learned in school, but it was a nice reminder. And it really helped, it kind of deconstructed things. And by the time I got done reading that, I thought, you know what, <laughs> that that may be the statistics, that's not necessarily my cancer. Mm -hmm. And so one thing I wonder, being a journalist and with what you're exposed to on a daily basis, some of the stories that you see and some of the things that you have to, I, I would think you have to compartmentalize that. I mean, yeah, you, have you do, to, and, and does that And does that help? I mean, does that help you kind of, say you know it does help i'm gonna get through this it's gonna be okay it it does help and um while i say i was nervous i don't think uh, it it was overwhelming yeah because everything was fast-tracked i mean uh, middle of december i'm hearing that i have this mass in the back of my head by <laughs> the middle of january they're rolling me yeah. into the operating room. Yeah. At one point, I was like, "Whoa, wait!" A <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But but uh, so things were fast tracked. Um, I had never been in surgery before. Okay. And so, wow. uh, you know, when they when they say start counting down, I mean, I had you know yeah. mi minor, you know, surgery like colonoscopies and things. Mm -hmm. But but this was pretty serious. Yeah. And they put the mass, you know, this yeah. this the, the the gas on you, and, and they say start counting. Yeah. And I think I made it to ninety nine, <laughs> <laughs> and, yep. and I was gone uh, and was out for a long time. Okay, but um, it it probably and and I think Dr. Wang had said, you know, after after you go through the radiation, maybe even a, a month or so, uh, he's one of the oncologists, he um, he said, you'll start to, this will start to hit you. Okay. And honestly, uh, about mid-July, it did start to hit me what I had gone through. Yeah. Yeah. And it's still starting to impact me and uh, what I had gone through this entire year. I still yeah. have a scan that I have to do this month just to, okay. to double check. And uh, obviously, I'll be taking those on a fairly regular basis yeah um, but uh, yeah it's starting you know you start to put things in perspective life is not forever yeah um, you know I'm 66 wow. so Great. so yeah. you know the exit sign is is, <laughs> is blinking down the road I know that <laughs> way down the road. way down the road but <laughs> barely see it but yeah. but but you you start to think about those things yeah and you want to take in more Reds games and yeah, yeah. and no, you so know true. watch what walk through the park and watch watch yeah. a Bengals game or something yeah. you know. No, it's, I mean it's so true, and I do think that gratitude's a big part of it. I mean, I oh, think if, yeah. you, if you go about this the right way, it's like, man, I got another day, and and how am I going to spend it? What am I going to do? And um, and yeah. I've and I've I, I'm sorry, but yeah, I, no, you know, no. I've talked about faith, and everybody's uh, faith is different. Mm -hmm. uh, but you you have to hold on to that. I, I yeah. firmly believe that, and um, I never doubted how, the outcome. And I was comfortable with whatever the outcome yeah. was. I wasn't right. walking around thinking this is it, life is over. Yeah. Um, 
uh, I was comfortable with whatever the outcome was. Yeah. I did some checking on paperwork to make sure yeah. everything yeah, yeah, was, yeah. you know, in place. But uh, well, you know, people. I mean, and people said it to me all the time, like, I can't believe how optimistic you are. But I mean, part of what I think about often is, man, this could be so much worse. Yeah. I mean, exactly. I see so many other people oh, that struggle. Exactly. Some the struggle is so much greater. I mean, how how am I going to walk around, you know, feeling sorry for myself? It's just not something I, I care to do. Um, and by the way, thank God you didn't emerge from this with like a Pee Wee Herman voice or something. Like that. <laughs> I, although that would have been funny. <laughs> that would have been. That would have been funny. <laughs> no, but your 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 big booming voice is one of your uh, signatures, and uh, and it's warm and and it's got a great tone to it. And we're we're well, very very you. glad that you still have that. Very thank glad you. you're still with us. And, so am uh, I. Hopefully for a long long time to come. So yeah. well, thank you. Thanks for joining us, and thanks, Dr. Bear, for coming Thank out today. Thank you, um, and for uh, and for introducing us to uh, Curtis as well as Sherry Hughes, who could not be with us today, but she's um, a good friend of Curtis's and, and yeah. a former colleague, if you want to say. But uh, anyway, thanks again, everybody. Um, we'll be back again soon um, with CCA's Medical Minute, and uh, take care, everyone. <laughs>